I think we're going to do one more Isaac, man, because that one was so insanely fast. Choose prediction. Choose outcome. We did win this one. It never ends. We're so good at Isaac, it's becoming boring for people. That's the damn dream. How about Green Red, the best kids show? Um, You mean Red Green? Oh, that must be so embarrassing. Green Red. Oh, man. Imagine getting the name of a Canadian television program wrong. Red Green's pretty funny. I, w I watched that a lot as a kid. I think I could tell a lot about a person, a, a Canadian at least, based on whether their household was a, a This Hour is 22 Minutes household or a Royal Canadian Air Farce household. I was definitely, I lived in a This Hour is 22 Minutes household, which is why as an adult, all of my jokes sound like Rick Moranis, or sorry, Rick um, Mercer yelling at you. And most people, unfortunately, we live in a Royal Canadian Air Force world where um, the preeminent bit was shooting a rubber chicken out of a cannon at a picture of a celebrity. It makes me sick, dude. Classic. Classic bit. Still funny? I hate it, man. Or I'm... I hate any show that has, like, a recurring character. And I understand this is, like, self-hating. I, I hate any sketch comedy show where as soon as you see a character on the screen, the audience applauds. They're like, holy shit, it's Mike from Canmore. I've been waiting weeks for Mike from Canmore to be back on the show. Woo! I love this guy and, like, the cool voice he does. I know exactly what I'm gonna get. I know exactly when to laugh. Look, I understand. I'm not saying I'm above it. In fact, if anything, I'm like very much beneath it. But it's gulp shitto. It's gulp shitto. I don't care. Baby Yoda's kind of cute. At least, at least he's cute. He's my Disney Plus uh, profile picture. Anybody else out there got the gulp shitto Disney Plus profile picture? OMG, me. Let's go. It would break my heart if Grogu was a NIMBY. I don't know if I could recover from that. Grogu going like this. But he's not using the force. He's raising his hand to filibuster at a city council meeting about uh, whether or not they should allow a six-story tower to compromise the view cone on Broadway. I mean, if it's fitting, right? He is like 70 years old or something. Seven, 700? Is that Yoda? Yoda's 700? I don't know. Why is your hand so red? I'm resting it on my desk, okay? I didn't realize. Every time I bring my hand up to the camera... People find something new. Oh, his elbows are so sharp. Oh, his fingers, his fingers bend more. Look at his pinky. His pinky bends way further back than it's supposed to bend. Lived my whole life thinking that I just had like normal hands and fingers. The internet has disabused me of that notion. Why are your knuckles so dry? Okay, that one, that's bait. They're not dry. If anything, my knuckles are moist. I mean, normal level of humidity. What the hell? I think I'm out of here. Just one more sack, dude. Please, just one more sacrifice. I promise. Just one more. Mm, come on! It's full health. Even better. Let's blow this joint. Ooh! Redeemed. 
You ever miss a spot when shaving your head? Yeah, all the time. I mean, like, that was actually what that last, uh, that tweet I made last week was about. I'd, I've been bald for a long time, but it really dawned on me when I was bald, when on Friday night I shaved my head. Then I went to bed, woke up in the morning, and realized I didn't shave any of the top of my head at all. And I didn't even notice. Like, not only did, like, my wife not notice, but I didn't notice as the person who has the head. So that's when you really know you're bald, is when you can miss, like, an entire... Well, re let me put it this way. You couldn't miss, like, the sides or the back without noticing, but you could definitely miss the top at this point, at least in my life. How do you forget shaving the top of your head? What's fucked up is that's where the least hair is. No? No, thank you. It's the easiest to forget if you're actually bald. Sure. Why not? I'm not gonna grow my hair back as a joke. If I wanted to destroy my physical appearance, I would just do what Twitch chat does and grow like a shitty beard, okay? I don't need to work that hard to look old. I went bald when I was 19. It's a real head start on this situation. Oof, 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 oof. <laughs> Sorry, that was, did that one hit too close to home? I didn't mean you, you chatter specifically. I'm sure your beard looks awesome. You probably look like a Viking, basically. You're probably, when you go outside in cargo shorts in January, people are probably like, oh, is that Thor Odinson? Too far? I haven't even started yet. Buckle up. In your Trivium hoodie from 2009. Okay, sorry, sorry. I've gone too far. Mega based, mega based, mega pine. Now it's too far. Okay, fair enough. Then we'll stop. Then we'll pull it back a little bit. I'm not going to go in here. I don't need it. I'm just going. I'm going to go to the curse room. You know what would have been better is if I said in your NL shirt from the last merch run. Then we all could have laughed about it instead of it seeming so mean spirited. That would have done it. I regret, I regret the missed opportunity. No! God, why? My shot speed! How dare they? Oh, man. You okay? I figured we had to try. See you. What in the Legend of Zelda is this? This is an actual, like, uh, Dan quote. Is, oh, no, Dan's not alive today, right? There's no Melania practice today. You look good with a few days of stubble. So, I first off, thank you. This is the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. But it's also, like, what a... What a cruel twist of fate, right? It just goes to show you, like, how... It, it's like life, man. Everything changes. It's so transient. The most handsome I am is with, like, three days of stubble. But you can't maintain three days of stubble. You know, they don't make a guard for three days of stubble. They make a guard for, like, six days of stubble. The trimmer doesn't do it. The trimmer takes me down to, to one day, and then I get like a day and a half of being at that like three days of stubble, and then it's gone forever. I'm not gonna play slots on Twitch, okay? Unless they wanna give me the bag. If stake.com offers me seven figures a month, then I'll stream slots for two months, okay? 
That's my promise. To, well, I, I don't know. Will you get have your friends get in touch with my friends? Maybe we can be friends, okay? Why only two? Because I would hate myself like every second of every day. I don't even like gambling. It actually like makes me physically ill. <laughs> I guess it probably wouldn't if I was gambling with the house's money, but you know. There's a slot machine in Isaac though. That's how I feel when people say investing in the S&P 500 is gambling. Um, my brother in Christ, you literally played the blood bank. I had an idea, by the way. No, this idea is not good. Okay, so I, here's my idea. I'm going to say it anyway. They have Uber for people. You know, it moves people around. They have Uber for food. It moves food around to people. They need Uber blood. I know that I should donate blood. However, like every adult in the world, I think I'm busier than I am. I feel like I don't have the time. It's a big to-do. It's a convenient, uh, an inconvenient thing to have to go do. What if you could Uber like a nurse to your house to take a pint of blood out of you while you streamed an Isaac episode? If, if Canada Blood Services did house calls, I would donate blood like however often... I mean, they, it's like once every six weeks, I guess, or something like that. I would do it once every six weeks, and I would, they don't need... Oh, I hit the cute button by accident. They don't even need to give me the cookie and the orange juice that probably makes up, like, you know, 20% of their budget. Because I've got orange juice in my... Well, I got, you know, I could eat something. I've got some ice cream or something I could eat. This is going to be a more billion-dollar idea. Let's go, dude. This is not a good take. I, I only am bringing this up to acknowledge that even the most based amongst us can have some bad takes. But like, I used to donate blood every six weeks. And then, Canada Blood Services just kind of started to get like really annoying. Like, they stopped. It, when you drive by Canada Blood Services, the sign always says, we need blood, and I believe that. Then when you get there, it's like they put up, like, 80 barriers. Have you ever had sex with anyone who's ever had sex with anyone who's ever thought about visiting the continent of Africa between 1963 and 1994? I don't know, man! I gotta make, like, two phone calls, okay? Can we... I th we're getting too deep down the damn rabbit hole now. Then, I, I think I told you, but when I went to Korea, which is like a more advanced country than Canada in, in many ways, they took me to like a back room the next time I gave blood in Canada and showed me a map of the country. And they were like, were you in any of these locations? And I was like, well, I was on the bullet train that our country can only dream of and it must have gone through that region. Did you ever step outside into tall grass for any? It took me like two and a half hours to give blood and giving blood. Usually it's like, you know, you just watch Everybody Loves Raymond for 15 minutes. So I stopped doing it because it, it eats up like your whole night. Even though it's a good thing to do, it became, like, so convenient. Or so inconvenient, I should say. If they would just come to my house and, like, take the blood from me, I would be happy to do it. I know that's probably, like, operationally very unreasonable. <laughs> What's your blood type? I don't know. I think it's, like, A negative or something. Would you rather do the questionnaire live on stream? Yeah, because the answer to all the questions is no. I mean, that doesn't bother me. It could be like a sponsored thing. Like, I could, they could come to my house, take my blood, and we'll be like, see, look at how easy that is. Now everybody should go give blood. Yes, I'll take. I, the, the best part of giving blood is when they finally, like, stick that damn needle in you so that they leave you alone for two damn seconds not asking you personal questions you know Have you ever shoved the kitchen utensil up your anus what the hell man it 
It's too much. It's too personal. And it takes so long. <laughs> I like this is and I, I get it's great for safety. Which is probably important when you're giving other people's blood to you know, other people. But like if you've never given blood in Canada, you go sit in they're like, we they call you on the phone. We need you to give blood immediately. Then you show up and they're like, it's a 45 minute wait. And you're like, what the hell? You lied to me. Then you go sit in a chair with the first nurse. She gives you like a pinprick on your finger and then they drop, it's your first test. They're testing to see if you're of noble, highborn blood, I think. Uh, they drop it into a suspension and if it dips low enough, you pass the test. What's your reward for passing the test? You get to wait another 15 minutes uh, while filling out a questionnaire of any dirty thoughts or acts you've ever done in your entire life. And also, any countries you've ever visited, or any countries anyone you've ever thought about sleeping with has ever visited. And you'll learn something about how Canada views the rest of the world. Did you ever have a pen pal in Croatia? You're like, what, what's wrong with Croatia, man? I didn't know that there... I thought we were on the level. Okay, so then after you fill out that questionnaire, you get taken into a smoky room with a bad cop and a good pop, a good cop, where uh, two nurses repeat the exact same questions you just answered to you, and then you have to answer them verbally with a, a lie detector polygraph wrapped around your chest and a camera pointed directly at your pupil to measure any kind of microdilation. And then after that's done, they give you a, a, one sticker that says, use my blood. The other sticker is a cyanide capsule that if you're too embarrassed to, to have admitted to any of the previous questions, you simply bite down on it and the sweet embrace of death takes you away. Having completed all of that, now you can sit in the chair and watch 15 minutes of Everybody Loves Raymond in peace. It, that's why it takes like 90 minutes, and I, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's good reason. I'm just something of like a startup-minded disruptor myself. Uh, and as a result, I feel like there's a lot of ways that we could disrupt the blood industry and make it more convenient for everybody. The first one is going to be independent contractors. The nurses, I understand why they're so concerned with safety. They're heroes, quite frankly, but it takes so long. If we could just get some independent contractors that maybe took like a six week course to start uh, doing the blood donation stuff, that would be. And then we gotta. Uh, can we make it more fun? Like maybe when you pass the, the test where you drop a suspension of blood into some water to see if you have uh, like low iron, maybe if you succeeded, it could play like some confetti or something like that. And then they'll be like incentivized to do it in the future. We're going to gamify the experience a little bit. I was also thinking of like maybe some sort of rewards program or something like that. Like when you get enough stars, instead of just getting like a normal dad's oatmeal cookie, we could actually give you like a name brand Oreo, which also opens the door for things like, uh, if I may be so bold, maybe like sponsorships, like maybe Mrs. Fields could choose to actually uh, like sponsor blood donations this month and then everybody could get themselves some uh, yeah, Miss Fields cookies as a result of that. Dude, I'm telling you, it could go. It could go. Anyway, it's just a really inconvenient. But basically, the other subtext here is I'm pretty much just a baby. In Croatia, we actually get extra days off from work if we donate blood enough. In Canada, if you donate blood a hundred times, they take a Polaroid picture of you and put it on the wall. So I don't know who's winning in this one. Like more time to, you know, spend as I please. I mean, that's something. But hey, strangers looking at your photo on the wall and being like, look at that guy. He donated blood a hundred times. I mean, is there a price you can place on heroism? The answer to that question, of course, is yes. Sorry, we could, we could, you gotta be careful. This is not a bit that can work in the modern uh, comedian climate. But I, I've talked ad nauseum about Jester's immunity, so I won't regale you with the, how you literally can't be upset with me for having a joke that's a bad take because of I'm the only person on earth not afraid to tell the truth. However, I think you, it just is, 
is just... They leave you the voicemail. They say we're in desperate need of blood. You get there, you expect it to be a ghost town, and they're gonna be showering you with praise. Instead, they're like, hey, take a seat with these 20 other bozos we tricked into coming in here, out of the goodness of their heart. We'll be with you when we'll be with you. Is he still going on about the blood? I don't know how to pivot off of the lo <laughs> off of the bit. I don't know how to pivot off of it. Oh, we're done. Okay, see ya. Oh, you think Dan will beat Millennia tomorrow? Mm, probably not. Would be my guess. I don't mean that in a negative way. I just think like having only seen Phase Two one time, he's got a little bit. I mean, he's got more dues to pay, right? Great, a golden chest. Just what I've always dreamed of. Tell him to get more HP? I would never besmirch my friendship with this man by telling him to get more HP. Never. At this point, I would be disappointed in him if he got more HP. Negative pills into positive pills. We can do this. Because to, to go this far and then go back on his principles, like that's it's beneath him. You already did? Yeah, but that's before it was like a thing. Now that it's a thing, I support it. People get it twisted a little bit. When I was telling Dan to level his VIG, that was before the no VIG challenge existed. I gave him some tips that would help him beat the game before June. He said, forget that. Whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. I bet you look good on the dance floor. And he uh, he leaned into it. At that point, what, do I have any advice for him? Yeah, uh, like be like literally perfect on every fight. That's the only advice I got. You, you made your bed. I'm happy you're going to lie in it. Like, in it, it, sincerely, it's, a, it's an impressive challenge to complete. Get good? I mean, yeah, base. I mean, you, he's got to get great, let's be honest. He's come a long way. Dude, you're right. Eddie room plus the wafer? Chad knows how to play Isaac. Ryan, you're at 1.9k on live stream fail from yesterday. I saw, yeah. That was, um, there's the story about the Pokemon, right? The, the shiny Pokemon that I caught in one get. And then everybody said, great story, but just so you know, meow, 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 people talk, people talk, meow, 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 meow. shiny, legendary shinies are a guaranteed first catch. Meow, 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 meow. Are you happy? You sapped a little joy out of the world. Congratulations. I'm still happy with it. Like, I, I know that shinies are a guaranteed uh, first catch right now. But I choose not to let the information enter my brain as truth. Like, I know that that's true. But I also, like, in my head, I also hold the idea that even if it didn't, that throw would have gotten it. I'm holding to... A lot of people, they'll be like, oh, I took cognitive science. Cognitive dissonance is like one of the most harmful things for the human psyche. Nah, man. I disagree. How do you feel about that? Hold two uh, conflicting thoughts as true simultaneously. Challenge difficulty degree. Very possible. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it as we speak. Thank you pretty good oh, and you know what there's a sign I've been rewarded so I must be right how about one of these real quick all right what a waste I can't I'm sorry I I not after getting Godhead a man's got to know his limitations 
I'm not gonna. I'm no. I'm not gonna do. I'm not. I, I don't care. Honestly, I'm marching to the beat of my own drum. If I had played Isaac only to have fun, I would still be making daily Isaac episodes. People are not ready to face the truth yet, but the truth of the situation is one of the reasons I stopped making Isaac episodes is because I got cyber bullied. Anytime I would do something that was uh, too in the pocket, people would be like, you fell off. And I'd be like, okay, so next time I'm going to try not to have fun. Now we're playing so much more Isaac on stream because of the fact that I'm, you know, I'm putting me first. And it feels amazing. What is this? The Hermit. It turns us into greed for 30 seconds. Nope. What? I don't understand. Thanks for the coin. <laughs> you gotta play the way you wanna play, man. Exactly. Yeah, I'm having more fun putting myself first now. And it feels damn good. Not to mention, if you always play zany, it's never zany. I'm a big believer. That's why movies, you know, that are like snakes on a plane is kind of like dog shit. It's like way too self-aware. That's why movies like Sorry to Bother You were kind of sick. Because for the first two thirds of the movie, you're like, wow, this is very engaging. I wonder what's going to happen next. And then in the final act, you're like, what the hell? Really? I didn't see that coming. Just a little sprinkle of Zane. Movie. Help, 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 help. That Jason Siegel movie where he robs the house was kind of Zane at the end. Unfortunately, it was kind of um, um, a little boring and prosaic throughout. It was kind of dog shit. We don't say that anymore. We say dog water. It's Zoomer parlance. No, we don't. Well, maybe you don't. Boomer. <laughs> I get it now. I understand now why it feels so damn good. No, I've not. Stop asking me if I've seen Morbius. I haven't seen Morbius, okay? I'll see Morbius when they make a Medea family morbing. Then I'm all in. When Tyler Perry as Medea turns into a vampire and then she goes, Excuse me, do you have any blurred? Then I'll see it, okay? If we can meme it back into theaters, we can meme them into making this movie. Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> um, hello? I said blurred. Oh my god, I'm merbin. You're gonna make me merb. Man, that would go. That would definitely go off. What about everything everywhere all at once? Okay, you, you bullies. I, I want to see it. When they say it's coming to streamers, do they mean real streamers like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus? Or do they mean I can pay $20 to watch it at home instead of $20 to watch it in the theater? Because it makes a big difference for me. It's, it's coming to Paramount Plus? They've given you the right to pay for it. Okay, then they've given me the right to wait to watch it for the price I already pay. I will watch it, I promise. 
It's going to hit overseas markets in June. Okay. Wait, it's June right now. It's June right now. I was so excited. Dude, I don't understand the younger kids these days. I'm willing to wait so that when I watch the movie, quote unquote for free on a service I already pay for, A24 and the producers of the film will get like, you know, six cents or something for me watching it. They'll get the credit for the hard work they put in. Everyone's like, no, boomer, just steal it and watch it right now. We give you permission. What the hell? You didn't make... If you love the movie so much, why don't you want people to, to support it? Just mail them a dime? Bro, the stamp is like 70 cents. I saw it in theaters. Okay, you're innocent. You're innocent. I don't know what you do. Let's just take you immediately. Let's buy you for a second. Give me more pedestals. Just mail them a stamp. You can only you. I, but then if I put the stamp inside, then I got to use a stamp to send the envelope. It's not like they can take the stamp off of the envelope and then put it. They can use it themselves to mail a copy of Blade Runner 2049 to like an 84 year old man in Aurelia. Okay, give me one of these. That's a good item. I will take that. I'm going to roll you. I'm going to roll you. I'm going to take you. I'm going to leave. 2049 kind of slaps. Yeah, it's. I would say it's kind of Kino for sure. Love the 2049. Look up sonar and radar so you can stop complaining about your region locked account. I'm being honest with you, and this is coming from a place of love. I literally watch like eight minutes of television per day amortized out over the course of an entire month. It's not, it's just not going to happen. Come, excuse me? Give me something here. I feel blessed. That's funny. I don't feel blessed. I feel a little blessed here. Why did they add this to the game? Just to punish us? What does this thing do? It gives, it gives you false hope is what it does. Okay. It actually kind of sucks. No, there's a 1% chance every time you play it that it'll give you um, Godhead. So actually, it's really good. Plus, I've raised my chances of a, uh, of a deal with the Angel from 15% to 30.8. All it cost me was fucking everything. So it's a pretty good deal if you think about it. How are you going to Canadianize your content for Bill C11? I'm telling you, my argument, and I'll make it in front of the damn House of Commons if I got to. I'll go up to the pulpit in the Peace Tower and sing it, you know, from the top of Parliament Hill all the way to Siegel's Bagels. I mean, Kettleman's Bagels. I forgot what the regional bagel of choice was in Ottawa. I, everything I make is Canadian content because I am Canadian. I literally have 100% CanCon Canadian content because I'm Canadian. I already, I probably have like at least 10% CanCon to begin with because I always talk about Canadian stuff over the course of an episode. Basically, CanCon is like a Canadian mafia racket that is like, you know, I mean, here's the thing. If you're going to be like, one thing I hear from Americans all the time is why do Canadians always know who was born in Canada and who was born in America? Well, as soon as Bill C-11 gets passed, it's because if I don't mention that uh, Alanis Morissette was born in Canada 
if Shania Twain was born in Timmins, Ontario, then I could be subpoenaed to stand trial in, in front of uh, Pierre Paul Lever, okay? So, like, I, I, legally speaking, I, I have a responsibility to do so. These any good? <laughs> oh man. Who is Bill C11? It's the lead singer of, of Billy Talent. His name is Bill C. Bill C11. I'm not gonna lose this run. Don't cry. Your channel points. We're not here for. Your money. We're here for the bank's money. Your money's federally insured, etc., etc. Whatever. Dude, it's the easiest job in the world. You lose channel points, just click on the treasure chest. Doesn't matter. I've started now just losing channel points as a joke whenever I'm in Dan's chat. I pop in, like, for three minutes, and I say, I'm war chesting this one. And then I, I go all in on whatever his ridiculous bet is for belief, and then lose all my points and X out the damn tab. I love how the, the casino for millennia has changed. Is now is no longer typically like, will he uh, beat millennia this attempt? It's now like, will he get a stun? Will he... <laughs> Will he take more than two sips? Will he, Andy, or Marty? If you'll excuse me, excuse me, excuse me real quick. Mm, mm, I could probably kill both. Dude, Dan does all, and this is not a knock on my mods, okay? Dan does have the, the most dedicated uh, mod team in the whole game. Why not? Like, they're literally running bets, like, 24-7. Like, they're running, like, a bet every 22 seconds. Sure. It's, it's ass, unfortunately. Why aren't you? Well, because I think that at some point it can distract from the content I'm trying to create. But I understand why he does it. It is it's entertaining. Is that how long he survives? Yes. <laughs> On average, I think. Apologize to Origin. I did. I, I'm just saying he's got the hardest working mods in the game. I am a laissez-faire guy. I appreciate that we... I mean, here's the thing. The mods are a reflection of the streamer. The mods almost never ban anybody. Like, I would say, like, I ban probably, like, 5x more than the mods ban. Because I know what my standards are. And they have to infer it from my actions. Because you're a little baby who gets insulted easily? Okay, did I ban somebody yesterday? Because we were talking about my YouTube channel. And someone said, can you have your editor put chat in the videos? And I said, I am my editor. And then someone said, that explains why your videos are ass. And then I just hit this, the quickest slash ban QA uh, tab to autocomplete ban of all time. Yes. Did I then go back later that night, audit their chat logs, realize they've been watching for a long time, and then unban them? Yes. Absolutely. A lot of people would say, be, be slow to anger and quick to forgive. I'm like halfway there. I'm quick to anger, but I am also quick to forgive. I got like a little of column A and a little of column B. I'm not answering that. <laughs> 
Should just do a scary timeout there. Yeah, but here's the problem. Slash timeout is like three times more characters than slash ban. And slash ban feels damn good. Because slash timeout, someone like... They could stew in it for a minute and then come back and pretend nothing happened. Slash ban, you gotta like... You gotta kiss the ring. I didn't make this person kiss the ring, by the way. I felt like I, I banned them in anger when I didn't have to. But when someone's being a real a-hole... It is nice when they type something where they think they have some power. Oh, I hate you, you bald idiot. You stink. Your feet smell bad. I don't know anybody on earth who uses feet deodorant. That's disgusting, you bald loser. And then... It's pretty good. Then you get to go to the unban requests. Oh, man. I acknowledge when I said you were a bald loser who uses foot deodorant, I should not have said that. I was overcome in a moment of anger over something stupid, and I wish I hadn't said that. I promise I will never say things like that again. It's the sweetest thing on the planet. I think that's what Bono was singing about in The Sweetest Thing by U2. He wasn't singing about Milo, she throws me back a rubber ball. He was singing about the feeling of having power over another individual. <laughs> oh, well, the sweetest thing. Do -do 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 How many people do you ban? Uh, maybe like, honestly, like one a month. It's pretty rare. And then I would say, like, a quarter of those get the unbanned. Uh, with, without even a request. Sometimes I will finish a stream, and then I'll look at the mod log. And, and I'll be, like, with a, a clear mind, I'll be like, should I ban this person? Most of the time, the answer is yes. Some of the time, the answer is no. I probably did. I, I could have uh, just given them a timeout or something like that. Yeah, a little post-ban clarity. Exactly. It's a real thing. That's about I don't I don't ban very often. <laughs>